spoken word artist who got into po uh, poetry f um, following the passing of my mother well, when I was 19, uh, still at university. And I found poetry to just be a way really for me to just understand the confusion and difficulty that I was going through. And it's called Living With Loss. I uh, hope you enjoy it. I wake on the wrong side of the bed, testing my stability, thoughts in my head, clenching my chest. I search for answers that never present, all that is left, the wardrobe of mess left untouched. Stress silky dresses on love, it's enough to take my strength and sanity. As I desperately try and find a memory, but this travesty has made my life a painstaking melody. A minor scale piece fueling my anxiety. Naturally, I project this anger on society, unrightfully hurting those who show kindness. It's unjust, undignified, unrighteous. Despite this, these are my coping devices. No joke, this grieving evokes panic and derange as I hear mum calling out my name. A tame mimic in the back of my brain, tearing away at my inner core, luring me toward a lifetime of pain. You're fine. I'm imprisoned in my mind, but I can't escape. Still bars keep my thoughts at bay, I'm locked away, I'm far from free. My numbing megs are a short release, it's peak. Lights off, I'm crying for a week. The louder I scream, the smaller I seem. Drowning in sweat, struggling to breathe, I wheeze as life's rope tightens. I'm suffocating and frightened, the uneasy pain only heightens. You'll find... I'm imprisoned in my mind. You see, there's this grey cloud that follows me. Unlike any grey cloud before, this raw wind of numbness doesn't just knock at the door, it knocks it down with no account for the amount of torture I've had to endure. This grey cloud isn't just passing by. It's a toxic lullaby, present from morning to night, disguised as a voice of guidance with my best interest in mind. But you'll find it's a voice of darkness that you can't run or hide from. But mum always knew the right things to say. She just had this way, no matter what time of day or how fast her cancer spread. She made sure that the thoughts in my head were encouraging. Instead of the grimacing grief that has been left. Two ticks, message received, but not read. But wait. It connects. That isn't entirely correct, because with her last few breaths, she left a departing gift, one that can be seen ever so clearly. I sat beside her, tears strolling down my face heavy. There was nowhere to escape. I was left staring death in the face. Then the most remarkable thing occurred. Absurd, in all her tiredness and pain, she gathered what strength remained, grabbed my hand and squeezed. The pain in my chest eased. I was coated in protection for as long as I need. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Well done.